The Battle of Zaipi was fought between the forces of Lu Bu against the allied armies of Cao Cao and Lu Bei from the winter of 198 to 7th of February 199 towards the end of the Eastern Han Dynasty in China. The battle concluded with victory for Cao Cao and Lu Bei. Chapter 1 Background In 194, while Cao Cao was away attacking Tao Chen in Shu province, his subordinates Chen Gong and Zhang Miao rebelled against him and aided Lu Bu in invading his base in Yan province. Cao Cao abandoned his invasion of Shu province and turned back to attack Lu Bu, culminating in the Battle of Yan province which lasted more than 100 days. By 195, Cao Cao had retaken all his cities in Yan province and defeated Lu Bu at Juye. Lu Bu and his men fled east to join Lu Bei who had succeeded Tao Chen as governor of Shu province. In 196, Cao Cao found Emperor Shen in the ruins of Luoyang and brought him to Shichang, where the new capital and imperial court would be based. In the same year, Lu Bu took advantage of the conflict between Lu Bei and Yuan Shu to capture Zaipi, capital of Shu province, effectively seizing control of the province from Lu Bei. Lu Bei was forced to surrender his governorship of Shu province to Lu Bu and settle in the nearby city of Zhao Pei. Not long later, Lu Bu felt threatened by Lu Bei's presence and led his troops to attack Lu. Lu Bei was defeated by Lu Bu and had no choice but to join Cao Cao. Cao Cao provided Lu Bei with supplies and sent him to garrison at Zhao Pei. Around 197, Yuan Shao was in control of the three provinces of Ji, Qing and Bing north of the Yellow River, so he wrote a letter to Cao Cao in an arrogant tone. Around the same time, Cao Cao had just been defeated by Jiang Shu at the Battle of Wangkeng and the letter angered him. Cao Cao felt threatened by Yuan Shao's growing influence in northern China and wanted to attack Yuan, but felt that his forces were not strong enough. Cao Cao's strategists Go Jia and Xu Nu assessed the situation, listing out the various advantages Cao Cao had over Yuan Shao. They also advised him to use the opportunity to eliminate Lu Bu when Yuan Shao was at war with Consun Zan, because it was possible that Yuan Shao might ally with Lu Bu to attack him. Cao Cao then made preparations for a campaign against Lu Bu. Chapter 2 Battle Chapter 2 Section 1 Conflict between Lu Bu and Yuan Shu. In 197, Yuan Shu declared himself emperor and sent his subordinate Han Yin to meet Lu Bu, proposing a marriage between his son and Lu Bu's daughter, so as to foster a stronger alliance between him and Lu Bu. Lu Bu initially agreed to the proposal and sent his daughter to follow Han Yin back. However, Lu Bu still bore a grudge against Yuan Shu for attacking him five years before so he changed his mind after listening to Chen Gui. Lu Bu pursued the convoy and retrieved his daughter, captured Han Yin, and sent him to Xuchang, where Han was executed on Cao Cao's order. Cao Cao appointed Lu Bu as general of the left and personally wrote him a letter to console him. Lu Bu sent Chen Deng to meet Cao Cao and thank Cao on his behalf. When Chen Deng met Cao Cao, he said that Lu Bu was bold but not very astute, and was untrustworthy, so he should to be eliminated as soon as possible. Cao Cao agreed with Chen Deng's view. Chen Deng was appointed administrator of Guangling and secretly implanted by Cao Cao as a spy in Lu Bu's forces. On the other hand, Yuan Shu was angered by Lu Bu's betrayal, so he sent his generals Jiang Xun and Chao Ri to lead an army to attack Zaipi from seven directions in collaboration with the White Wave bandits led by Han Shen and Yang Feng. Lu Bu was in a disadvantageous situation, with only 3,000 men and 400 war horses. He was afraid that he might not be able to resist Yuan Shu, so he blamed Chen Gui for giving him poor counsel. Chen Gui, however, thought that Han Shen and Yang Feng were not genuinely loyal to Yuan Shu, so he advised Lu Bu to persuade them to break their alliance with Yuan Shu. When Lu Bu attacked Yuan Shu's forces, Han Shen and Yang Feng defected to his side. Yuan Shu's troops were defeated and Lu Bu pursued them until he reached south of the Wai River. 
Chapter 2 Section 2, Siege of Zaipi. In 198, Lu Bu made peace with Yuan Shu again, and sent his general Gao Shun to attack Lu Bei at Zaopei. Cao Cao sent Xia Ho Dun with an army to reinforce Lu Bei, but they were still defeated by Gao Shun. Zhao Pei fell to Lu Bu's forces in October 198 and Lu Bei escaped, but his wives were captured. Following that, Cao Cao officially launched his military campaign against Lu Bu. When Cao Cao's army reached Pengcheng, Chen Gong urged Lu Bu to attack Cao Cao because Cao Cao's troops were weary from their long march from Shichang. Lu Bu, however, insisted on staying in Zaipi and wait for Cao Cao to arrive before attacking. A month later, Cao Cao conquered Pengcheng. At the same time, Chen Deng defected to Cao Cao's side and led his men from Guangling to Zaipi. Lu Bu personally led his troops out to engage the enemy but was defeated and forced to retreat. Lu Bu returned to Zaipi, and defended the city firmly without advancing. Cao Cao wrote a letter to Lu Bu, explaining the perilous situation the latter was in. Lu Bu became afraid and had the intention of surrendering, but Chen Gong felt that Cao Cao's army had traveled a long distance and would not be able to fight a prolonged battle. Chen Gong advised Lu Bu to garrison part of his forces outside the city, while the rest would remain with him inside, so that they can support each other if either side came under attack. Chen also said the best time to engage Cao Cao's forces would be months later, when Cao's supplies run out. Lu Bu agreed with the plan and wanted to leave Chen Gong and Gao Shun behind to defend Zaipi while he was stationed outside the city. However, Lu Bu's wife claimed that Chen Gong and Gao Shun could not get along with each other, so that would be a problem if Lu Bu was not around. She also felt that Cao Cao treated Chen Gong better than how Lu Bu was treating Chen now, so Chen might betray Lu Bu. Lu Bu thus aborted Chen Gong's plan. Lu Bu sent Wang Kai and Xu Si to request reinforcements from Yuan Shu, but Yuan refused when he recalled how Lu Bu reneged on the marriage proposal earlier. Wang Kai and Xu Si attempted to persuade Yuan Shu to send aid, claiming that Yuan Shu would be isolated if Lu Bu was eliminated. Yuan Shu considered sending relief forces, but did not do so immediately. In the meantime, Lu Bu thought that Yuan Shu was unwilling to help him, because of the marriage proposal incident, so he personally escorted his daughter out of Zaipi and attempted to send her to Yuan Shu's territory. However, Lu Bu encountered Cao Cao's troops outside the city and was unable to break out of the siege, so he had to turn back. Cao Cao's troops began to become tired and weary after failing to capture Zaipi despite besieging it for a long time. Cao Cao had the intention of withdrawing, but his strategists Xu Yu and Gou Jia thought that Lu Bu's army was already low on morale after having suffered so many defeats, so they advised Cao Cao to press on with the siege. Cao Cao then ordered his soldiers to direct the waters of the Yi and Sea rivers to flood Zaipi. The beleaguered Lu Bu prepared to surrender after Zaipi was flooded for over a month, but Chen Gong stopped him. Chapter 2 Section 3, Lu Bu's Surrender Lu Bu's general Hao Cheng found a man to help him take charge of fifteen horses, but the man escaped with the horses, planning to present them to Lu Bei. Hao Cheng personally pursued the man, and retrieved the horses. The other generals congratulated Hao Cheng on his achievement and Hao prepared food and wine and presented to Lu Bu. Lu Bu was furious and said, I ordered a ban on alcohol, and now you prepare wine. Are you planning to make me drunk and then turn against me? Hao Cheng was unhappy and afraid, so on 7th of February 199 he plotted with Song Shen and Wei Xu to capture Chen Gong and Gao Shun before surrendering to Cao Cao. When Lu Bu heard about Hao Cheng's defection, he led his remaining men to White Gate Tower, where he saw that Cao Cao's troops were closing in on him. He asked his men to kill him and bring his head to Cao Cao, but they refused? Lu Bu then surrendered. Chapter 3, Aftermath Lu Bu and his followers were tied up and brought before Cao Cao and Lu Bei. 
Cao Cao ordered Gao Shun to be executed after Gao did not reply when Cao asked him if he had anything to say. Lu Bu complained that he was too tightly bound but Cao Cao said, a tiger should be tightly tied up. Lu Bu then attempted to persuade Cao Cao to spare him and promised to serve Cao. As Cao Cao was pondering, Lu Bei said, haven't you seen what happened to Ding Yuan and Dong Shuo? Cao Cao rubbed his jaw. Lu Bu scolded Lu Bei, you're the most untrustworthy person. The Yingxiongji stated that Cao Cao initially wanted to spare Lu Bu's life after Lu pledged to serve him. However, Wang Bai, Cao Cao's registrar, immediately stopped Cao Cao and said, Lu Bu is a formidable prisoner of war. His subordinates are nearby, he cannot be spared. Cao Cao then said to Lu Bu, I wanted to spare you, but my registrar refuses. So, what should I do? When Cao Cao asked Chen Gong what would happen to his family members, Chen hinted that Cao should spare them. Cao Cao spared Chen Gong's family, and treated them well. Chen Gong then accepted his fate and walked to the execution ground without looking back. Cao Cao was deeply grieved by Chen Gong's death. Cao Cao then had Lu Bu executed by hanging. He ordered the dead bodies of Lu Bu and his followers to be decapitated and their heads sent to Shuchang and then later buried. Cao Cao accepted Zhang Liao, Chen Kun and others who previously served Lu Bu, and appointed them as generals or officials under him. Other minor warlords such as Zhang Ba, Sun Guan, Wu Dun, Yin Li, and Chang Zai who used to side with Lu Bu also surrendered to Cao Cao, and he put them in charge of various commanderies along the coastline. With the end of the Battle of Zaipi, Cao Cao completely eliminated the threat posed by Lu Bu. The following year, Lu Bei broke ties with Cao Cao and seized control of Shu province after killing Che Zhou, but Cao Cao quickly defeated Lu and regained control of the province. With Shu province now firmly in his control, Cao Cao no longer had any impending threats on his home base in Yen and Yu provinces. This became an advantage to Cao Cao in the subsequent Battle of Guandu in 200 against Yuan Shao. Chapter 4, Order of Battle Chapter 5, In Romance of the Three Kingdoms The battle was romanticized in chapters 18-19 of the historical novel Romance of the Three Kingdoms by Luo Guanzhong. Some fictional events were added, while actual ones were modified to large extents for dramatic effect. In the novel, the battle took place in two stages, the first took place near Zaopei while the second was at Zaipi itself. Some notable events in the novel's account of the battle are as follows. Chapter 5 Section 1, Shia Ho Dun Losing His Left Eye Cao Cao sent Shia Ho Dun to lead reinforcements to help Lu Bei, who was under attack by Lu Bu at Zaopei. When Xia Ho Dun arrived, he encountered Lu Bu's army led by Gao Shun, and he engaged Gao in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Both of them dueled for about 40 to 50 rounds. Gao Shun could not hold on any longer so he retreated, with Xia Ho Dun in pursuit. Lu Bu's subordinate Cao Xing spotted Xia Ho Dun on the battlefield, and he fired an arrow which hit Xia Ho in his left eye. Xia Ho Dun cried out and pulled out the arrow together with his eyeball. He exclaimed, The essence of my father and the blood of my mother, cannot waste it. He then swallowed his eyeball and charged towards Cao Crossing Cao Xing was caught off guard and was killed by Xia Ho Dun, who speared him in the face. The soldiers from both sides were shocked by the scene before them. Historicity Xia Ho Dun's biography in the Sanghazi mentioned briefly when Xia Ho Dun participated in a battle against Lu Bu's forces, he was hit by a stray arrow, and was injured in his left eye. No further details were provided. The Wailu stated that after the incident, the soldiers nicknamed Xia Ho Dun blind Xia Ho. Xia Ho Dun hated that nickname and when he saw his reflection in a mirror, he would knock it onto the ground. The only record of Cao Xing in history exists in the Yingxiongji, which stated that when Hao Meng rebelled against Lu Bu in 196, Hao's subordinate Cao Xing refused to join him in the rebellion. 
Hao Meng and Cao Xing fought, and Cao was injured by Hao but he managed to slice off Hao's arm. Hao Meng was later killed by Gao Shun. Lu Bu later praised Cao Xing for remaining loyal to him. Chapter 5 Section 2 Hao Cheng's Defection This incident took place when Lu Bu was besieged by Cao Cao's forces in Zaipi for months. His subordinate Hao Cheng seized back fifteen horses stolen from them and Lu Bu's men wanted to celebrate. Hao Cheng feared that Lu Bu might be angry because the latter had already banned his men from consuming alcohol, so Hao presented five bottles of wine to his lord. However, Lu Bu was furious and he wanted to have Hao Cheng executed, but Song Shen, Wei Xu and others pleaded with Lu Bu to spare Hao Cheng. Lu Bu agreed and had Hao Cheng flogged fifty times before releasing him. Lu Bu's men were all upset by the incident. Hao Cheng later plotted with Song Shen and Wei Xu to betray Lu Bu. That night, Hao Cheng stole Lu Bu's steed, the red hair, and fled to Cao Cao's camp. He told Cao Cao about their plan. Historicity the Sanghazi stated that Lu Bu's followers were starting to become disunited after Lu Bu had been besieged in Zaipi by Cao Cao's forces for about three months. His generals Hao Cheng, Song Shen and Wei Xu captured Chen Gong and brought their men to surrender to Cao Cao. The Juzu Chancho gave a similar account of the story in Romance of the Three Kingdoms, except that Lu Bu did not have Hao Cheng flogged when the latter presented wine to him. Instead, Hao Cheng became afraid after Lu Bu scolded him and threatened to execute him, so he discarded the wine and returned to join the other generals. He later became suspicious of Lu Bu and eventually led his men to surrender to Cao Cao. Lu Bu's biography in the Hu Hanshu combined the original text in the Sanghazi and the Juzu Chancho account, stating that Hao Cheng and others captured Chen Gong and Gao Shun and surrendered to Cao Cao. Chapter 5 Section 3 Lu Bu's Final Moments Lu Bu was resting when his subordinates Song Shen and Wei Xu captured him and tied him up. They threw his Ji down the walls and opened the gates for Cao Cao's forces to enter. Lu Bu was brought before Cao Cao and he complained that he was too tightly bound, but Cao Cao said, a tiger must be tied up securely. Lu Bu then said to Hao Cheng, Wei Xu, and Song Shen, I treated all of you well, why do you betray me? Song Shen replied, listen to your wives and concubines and ignore our advice. You call this treating us well. Lu Bu remained silent. Cao Cao then had Gao Shun executed. He wanted to spare Chen Gong but the latter insisted on accepting his fate, and was executed as well. Lu Bu attempted to persuade Cao Cao to spare him, saying that he was willing to serve under Cao Cao and help him conquer the empire. When Cao Cao asked Lu Bei for his opinion, Lu replied, haven't you seen what happened to Ding Yuan and Dong Chihuo? Lu Bu glared at Lu Bei and said, you're the most untrustworthy person. As he was being dragged away, Lu Bu turned back and shouted at Lu Bei, big-eared fellow. Have you forgotten the incident when I fired an arrow through the Ji? Cao Cao then had Lu Bu executed by hanging and his dead body decapitated. Historicity the Sanghazi stated that Lu Bu surrendered when he saw that he had been surrounded, instead of him being captured by his own subordinates who had betrayed him. His final words, said to Cao Cao and Lu Bei moments before his death, were similar to those mentioned in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Cao Cao then had Lu Bu hanged. He ordered Lu Bu's dead body to be decapitated and the head sent to the capital Shichang and later had it buried. Lu Bu's biography in the Huanshu mentioned that Lu Bu asked his subordinates to take his head and surrender to Cao Cao when he saw that he had been surrounded by Cao's forces. However, his subordinates were unwilling to do so, hence they surrendered together. The rest of the account is similar to that in the Sanghazi and its annotations. Chapter 5 Section 4 Zhang Liao's Surrender when Zhang Liao was captured and brought before Cao Cao after the battle, he scorned Lu Bu for his cowardly behavior. 
He showed no fear and even remarked that Cao Cao was lucky to have survived the blaze at Puyang. Cao Cao was furious and he drew his sword and wanted to kill Zhang Liao, but Guan Yu and Liu Bei stopped him and pleaded with him to spare Zhang. Guan Yu even knelt down. Cao Cao laughed, sheathed his sword, and said, I also know Wan Yuan is a loyal and righteous man. I was just testing him. He then personally released Zhang Liao from his bonds, took off his coat and wrapped it around Zhang, and offered him a seat. Zhang Liao was moved by Cao Cao's sincerity so he submitted to Cao. Historicity The Sangazi did not mention anything about this incident. It just simply stated that Zhang Liao surrendered to Cao Cao and was commissioned as a general of the household and received the title of a secondary marquis. It also remains unknown whether he did participate in the Battle of Zaipi or not. Chapter 6 In Popular Culture The Battle of Zaipi is featured in Koei's video game series Dynasty Warriors as a playable stage from the fourth installment onwards.